Hello, you're listening to Hibs Talk. I'm your host, always Gav. Joining me today is Dave. Right. And Stephen. Hello. Guys, how you doing? Not bad. Been a while. I know, I know. It's been a while. Um, aye. I, 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 know, I know this is podcast, so this is kind of useless for us, but you've got a really nice haircut, Stephen. Suits you. You're looking very suave. <laughs> yeah, need a lot more than a haircut. <laughs> Four months. <laughs> <laughs> How are you getting on, Dave? Aye, no bad, mate. No bad. Yourself? Yeah, good, good. Um, I had a bit of car trouble this morning, um, which is a bit frustrating, but my brother-in-law's been looking at that, which is good. Uh, so took up the day painting instead, um, getting the, the spare room painted, which is... Um, aye, I, I'm, not, I'm not big for painting, but I thought I'd better do it. So um, getting the bedroom done. Um, not How are you, the bedroom. Um, so the the boss picked them. She, uh, I've been doing the base coat, the white, the now, and then she's d- picked like a grey and then a darker grey for the featured wall. Um, so aye, pretty boring, but aye. I mean, I, 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 <coughs> plan is to kind of sell this place within a year or two. So I kind of guess it makes kind of a good idea to have it quite plain. But anyway, um, how are you getting on, Stephen? Yeah, not bad. Just working away. Aye, kept busy. I can imagine. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to have a chat about the transfer window, of course, today, and obviously look back at the Hamilton game, and then I had to only oh, no, have a wee bit of chat about uh, about broader Rangers because by the time that folk listen to this, the game might have already been and gone if folk are listening to this on Thursday or Friday. So, um, but I will have a, we'll have a chat about that as well. So let's let's start with the the transfer window, guys. Was this the best best transfer window ever? Been good. <laughs> um. No, we got a couple of a couple of players that I was keen on. Obviously, like Kyle McGinnis, I've sort of been an advocate of him since we played St Mirren when they came back up. I think he's a great player, but um, it was interesting actually because that thing that you were that you posted from that St Mirren page saying mm-hmm. that he was wasted out out as a winger. Like yeah. I thought his best came his best game came as a winger against us. When they first got promoted back up the Premiership, when he scored against us, because he ran, he ran our right back, aye, right back, riot that day. Aye, I mean, let, let, let's just start with Kyle McGinnis. Obviously, he's the the more recent one signing on a five year deal. Dave, your initial thoughts to to Kyle coming in? No, nah, it's decent, and the five year deal thing is massive. Like, yeah, see if he does well, and he is as good as what St. Man fans are making it, then. Could make a bit of money off the back of him, like quite easily. Uh, do you think it's maybe a lesson learned from the last big player we signed from St. Martin, arguably John McGinn? Imagine we'd given him a five year deal, you know, then had that extra year in order it would have given us a lot more, um, a, a stronger position to neg- negotiate if he'd had an extra year in his contract. Yeah, we, we would have got a bit more. I, do, I still don't think we would have got much more purely because the English market. Like they they don't treat the Scottish market the same, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um we we undersell down south all the time. So five year deal is brilliant. I'm early in with that. And um I've no i I've no seen him that much, or if I have, I've had too much to drink and I kinda remember. <laughs> um but I I'm, I'm I'm happy with him like. So as uh, Stephen alluded to there, I did get a Quote from uh, one of the St. Martin podcasts, Carter's Corner, they're called. Um, so, a message Brian saying, you know, what what kind of player can we expect? So, this is the kind of the full bit of it here. I did post part of this online, but he said, uh, every player moves on, but we have an uncanny knack of accepting low offers for our best players. Just a day since uh, saying he was going nowhere. A bit embarrassing, to say the least. McGuinness is a good player, unfortunately riddled with injuries over the last few years, uh, or else I'm pretty sure he'd have been in England by now. He's a traditional box-to-box uh, midfielder, um, given his debut seemingly out of nowhere by Jack Ross in 2016 during our terrible start to the season, 14 games without a win uh, from the start, and settled in immediately. Kyle covers a lot of ground during matches, possesses a good shot with each foot, and is a strong runner with desperate pace, uh, deceptive pace, sorry, meaning various managers have played him out wide, but he's wasted out there and definitely a central player. So, I mean, that's a bit that you can allude to, Stephen. We've spoke a lot about Halberg and how he can help the team get up the park. You know, the description there, box to box midfielder who's got a bit of pace about him. Could this be this missing link for helping us get up the park faster? Um, I, th- I think it could be. It could go both ways, though, because... I mean, you look at Joe Newell, take him as an example. Like, he was 
the central midfielder, put him out as a left wing back, and he's probably been that's probably been his best position. I think mm-hmm. it, it just sort of depends on what what we're needing at the time, and I think obviously there's a bit of flexibility with him. But I would like to see him. Last box to box player that we got from St Mirren was John McGinn, so. <laughs> If, if, this, if we could have another John McGinn on our hands, like I'd be quite happy with that. Yeah, and, and given the number seven jersey as well, I mean, Dave, um, just sort of from the description there, you quite thinking he's, he's kind of what we need at the moment in terms of the, the midfield? Uh, he can, he'll help a bit if he is driving us forward. And to be fair, he, he looks like he's got a few goals in him as well. Like when I looked at the, when you watch the highlight reel that a St. Man fan's done, he can hit a ball. So. That does help when your midfielder chip them in as well. So um, I'm obviously really excited about this five-year deal. Is a real same intent. Given number seven jersey as well. Um, I don't know how fit he is, but he is sitting the set to be in the squad for Broader Rangers. So hopefully he does get some minutes. Um, so I mean, we're, we're sort of saying about the you know I started the, the name of this episode, the t- uh, the name of the, the episode, and the way I kind of started this is this the best transfer window ever? I mean, let's let's run through the window that we're, the business that we've done. Uh, starting with Alec Gogic. Dave, thoughts on Alex Gogic so far? Very good. Happy with him. Hel- holding it all together really well. So I didn't know how much you wanted me to elaborate, mate. I uh, just, just a wee bit more. I just, just no, no, just a, a, a bit more, a bit more on that. Yeah, just, thanks for the feedback. Uh, so I just he's holds hold everything together. Nice defensive attributes as well. So I uh, happy. Uh, next one list is here uh, is Dylan Barnes, but Stephen also we've not seen him play. Um, so I'll quickly take this. So, I mean, I think he seems like a decent caliber keeper that's coming in to be a want to come in and be number two. Hopefully, he's putting a bit of pressure on Rocky. But the way Rocky's performing, I can't see him getting in. Uh, so your thoughts on Dre Wright so far, Stephen? Obviously, yeah, a bit unfortunate with injuries, but yeah, sort of a bit part really. Like he he came in from well his first game, had a couple of injuries, and then since he came back, he's done well got goals and stuff so you can't really argue good goal was it Rangers he scored against yeah uh, good goal against Rangers a wee bit lucky but you take it if he can put it through John McLaughlin's legs I'll be happy like, any day of the week so um, nah I think there's more to come from him definitely um, Jamie Murphy next one last Dave thoughts on him I think, I think he will turn it to be a good signing he was Pretty decent against Hamilton in the first half. Fantastic by some people's measurements. Some people yeah, say well, fantastic lot, against Hamilton. Yeah, a lot of people did think he was really good. So I thought he, I thought he would done all right, and I, it was probably the. I know we've not seen him much, but mm-hmm. he showed a lot of decent signs and that. So I'm fairly happy with him though. Uh, and obviously Stephen McGinn signed. Um, I think I don't know how much time game time we're going to see him, but it seems like he's a, a you know signed a, another sort of um, leader, another club captain, and things like that. And I, I think you know a good head to get in. And the fact that he was doing things up in the stand quite well and the stuff as well. I think there's a, a good prospect there. Like a role from last season. Yeah, like he'll come and fill in, but he's he's got to do a lot more off the park. I think than on the park. Definitely, um, I think it's a good, good, good comparison actually. And I can understand Stephen wanting to maybe get more of a coaching role um, at Dunfermline, but also getting some play time. So he's maybe getting a bit more than of what he wants there. But yeah, definitely, I will help fill that role. Um, and the 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 last one on the, on the list, Kevin Nisbet. Um, Stephen, been fantastic so far, hasn't he? Yeah, hundred percent. He's exceeded my expectations already. We're only what half the games in. Well, well, first round of fixtures in. Um, he's been good with assists as well. Yeah. And I think his link up play with Doidge, like he's slotted straight in there, and I think that's made the biggest difference. And I know you're the biggest Scotland fan out of the Stephen. Stephen. Are you a bit frustrated to see him not in the Scotland squad this week? The fact that Lauren Shanklin's in ahead of him is beyond me. I think I think that when this bit starts the season and Shanklin's injuries, why not pick the player that's on form? That's how Lyndon Dykes is in the squad, based on his form for the start of the season. And mm-hmm. the fact that he can hit a penalty, because that's pretty much all his goals have come from. So, uh, but no, I think that Nisbet has definitely got to be in. The, if we get to Euro 2020, Nisbet will be in that squad, 100%. And Dave, was the best business we've done, though, a new deal for Martin Boyle? Possibly. 
it's kind of it's kind of looking like it. He's getting back to how he was playing because he did have a a wee a few games where he wasn't the best. But I, I think the way he plays and the problems he causes and that is just I don't think it's something we would have been able to replace. So hmm. yeah, he's, he's massive for us. Yeah, I mean I know we done the uh, episode of a. Uh, the podcast a few weeks ago saying is Drew Wright a replacement for Ballot Boyle? Thankfully not. Um, a new deal, so really, really good bit of business there. Definitely, isn't he? Yeah. Like, see, like Hibs tweeting stuff out, and it's always Boyle in a laugh. And then any the questions and that they ask the players, like the jokey answers, is always Martin Boyle. Uh, players are always taking the piss at him. So he just seems to have have that camaraderie. That, yeah. That's the yeah, no, a very bubbly character that would arguably be a tougher one to replace uh, off the pitch as, as well as on it. Um, so what bit of business uh, are you guys most excited about? Um, obviously, I think two names come to mind, so it'll be interesting to see who you go for. But Dave, what, which which bit of business do you think will prove to be the best bit of business long term? Kevin Nisbet. I think if you're a goal scorer, you attract attention. So uh, he's got the potential to get Scotland call-ups. Um, and I think again, I didn't want us to be selling people for money and that, but he's definitely got he's definitely got a worth to him. And I think I don't see him running down his contract or extending. I see him being sold for a profit. See you, Um I want to say McGinnis, but I think it's it's just you need to see him a couple of games and just see where he's going to go. Um, so I probably agree with Nisbet at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I'm tempted to go the same because, like say, Dave's made a great point there about the fact that goal scorers get attention. He's probably got more of an opportunity in the Scotland squad looking at the what, what who his competition would be compared to McGuinness. Uh, um, he's obviously got McGinn, um, McLean, among, amongst many others. I could write a lot of them all off. Uh, Christie and all that, McGregor. So he does have a lot more competition for our Scotland position. So maybe Nisbet getting into Scotland squad will help us sort of in terms of increasing value but I'm really excited by Kyle I think he's going to be I mean the number seven jersey and a five-year contract really is a big statement for the club and I think he'll maybe prove to be the best at the lot but we'll obviously really exciting to see see what what, what kind of comes from it so it was a great start to the Hamilton game a couple of chances. Uh, I remember one early the first sort of minute and stuff we maybe could have done better with. But then we got a free kick on the edge of the box and Nisbet made it. It was uh, quite, quite clear he was going to be taking it. And free kicks is something he can add to his bag of tricks, Stephen. Yeah, 100%. Um, it's good to have somebody that's reliable, uh, dangerous from outside the box as well. Um, I think that's always something that's Hibs have been lacking in. Obviously, Marlon came in, done a job to start with, but that died down. So the power that that Nisbet generates on a shot from nothing is pretty spectacular, and I think that's got to be a big asset to him going forward as a striker. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. He can score with his left, he can score with his right. Um, he can score from distance. He can score with a header as well. I mean, and it was a header that kind of got the second. Dave, um, I mean, we could talk about the header in a second, but. Um, a great ball from Newell out on the, the left-hand side. Or the yeah. right-hand side, cutting on his left foot, sorry. Yeah, that nah, was... Uh, and we've seen that for Newell time and time again. Like, he has got the best delivery of uh, anybody in that team. So, yeah, definitely. It's good that we've got two strikers that can eat a ball. Mm. So, yeah. holds well. I mean, Newell's had a great start to the season. Um, I think there has been games where the midfield might have been missing something else, but... Is it going to be hard to displace Newell or do you see them working and uh, changing the formation and working in a three, him, Gogic and McGuinness um, once fully really fit, Dave? That's what, that's, I think that's what it'll be. I think that'll be your, your three, definitely. Stephen, well, how do you see us kind of, uh, once everybody's fully up and running? Yeah, I think, I think that's how it's got to go. You don't bring a player in on a five-year deal where you've paid over £100,000 for them to... Uh, sit on the bench so yeah realistically if, if the reports are saying that he's got to be a box to box midfielder you need him in amongst Newell and Gogic yeah um, and obviously Newell did come off at half time and was uh, spotted in a, 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 a sling 
Um, I've not actually checked the, the press conference today, so I don't know if there's been any update on his uh, condition, but hopefully that's nothing too serious. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, a great header from, from this bit makes it 2-0. Uh, and then, uh, so overall, though, there was other chances we had. It was a, it was a really exciting first half, Stephen. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of back and forth and... We never sort of really looked threatened when, when they were countering. I thought that the defence in the first half was really solid. Um, I, no, I didn't, didn't thought they needed to do it. I, I thought it was a really good first half overall. Yeah, um, and I, I ideally could have been sort of further ahead. Oh yeah, 100%. I think even like David Tanner was saying at half-time, it could, could have easily been five. And I mean, the second half, um, obviously Hamilton maybe change their game plan a bit um, but is it maybe sort of doing that or do you think that Hibs maybe had the wrong approach the first 10-15 minutes the second half Dave? Possibly a bit of both um, we, were, we were very comfortable in, in the driving seat so I think yeah, it probably was just a bit of both of the things maybe too relaxed just letting the, the game run really and then Obviously, hoping for an opportunity for a third, which came. Yeah, I mean, I remember I text you guys saying we're giving Hamilton a bit of hope here. Unfortunately, we're still weren't playing too bad, but we're giving them a bit of hope. Um, and then they did get a, a chance. Um, you know, Akinpo got uh, through on goal. McGinn fouled him, um, and a, a penalty was given. But Stephen, do you think it maybe should have been a red card? I mean, sort of people were saying afterwards, you know, the fact it was last man could it have been. Yeah. Double jeopardy thing that's been brought into play over the last couple of seasons. Mm-hmm. Like, you give a penalty, you don't give a red card. It's, it has been sort of highlighted more and more last season when they and I uh, really since VAR came in place and it was brought in down England, they've never really given it. I've not seen an instant, incident where they've given a red card as well as a penalty in the last year. It should, yeah. it should have been a red card and a free kick. So it just depends what way you look at it. Like we got lucky, we got yellow card, and then Rocky saved it. So yeah, and a, a fantastic save from from Marciano. He's he's had a fantastic start to the season, Dave. Yeah, I would have loved to have seen him. Obviously, still can sign a new deal, but it's that's like probably the next big thing that needs ticked off. Yeah, I'd agree. I think him and Neil, I want to see the two of them um, signing their new deals and I think they're the two most important ones, the sort of players that are in the last years of their contract. Um, and then, like I say, but we, we did manage to get a, a third goal though. Uh, we got a free kick out on the left-hand side and Halberg, who came on for the second half after Neil's injury, as we sort of talked about, floated in the ball. Uh, Dodge headed it back across goal and Hanlon was there to head it across the line. Great to see us dangerous from set pieces, Stephen. Yeah, 100%. And as well as conceding goals from set pieces, we're scoring them again. Um, I think like Dave said about both strikers being able to head a ball makes a big difference because even if you're not heading it towards a goal, if you can knock it down for another player, it's just as effective. It takes three or four people out of the game when they've knocked it down for handling. So, uh, yeah, good to see. Yeah, very clever from Dodge, you know, putting it back into that danger area and, and Hamlin taking advantage. Um, but then, you know, Hamilton got a second chance um, to get back into a penalty and this time they took it. Um, obviously, and then, so that was 3-1. And then Port, the Portress on goal. Dave, what, what, what happened with that on goal? I don't know. It's just unfortunate, isn't it? It just depends. Mm. Bad, bad awareness, Bad positioning. I don't know. You can put it down to anything. Where I just think it's like that could come off as he didn't go wide, go anywhere. Not I mean, but it went in top corner. I'm more concerned the defending for the first penalty, which you just brushed past. Right. Okay. Well, like, what, what was your thoughts on that? There. Well, right. So I've seen this a couple of games. Right. It's bad decision making and pressing the ball when we don't need to press the ball. So Paul McGinn against Rangers pressed the, that ball in the middle, left his man at the back post. You saw Porte staying at Celtic Park, pressing the ball, getting caught out. Paul McGinn the other night against Hamilton. That boy's kind of far out enough, but so, but he's trying to dive in and win the ball. And then he finds himself getting beat. And then the guy's one-on-one with Porte, and Porte sticks out a lazy leg. See if Paul McGinn just stands that boy up there. What's that boy got going to do? 
Yeah, they they've pro- they've proven the whole night that they didn't really cause a threat. They had nothing to break down. So what he's I I don't know if he's just over keen. We're over keen to win the ball back quicker, but there needs to be times where you go, can we? They're not in a dangerous position now, and that's not what we've done for the first penalty. Uh, the second but, penalty. Uh, it's, it's one of those ones where if somebody you know comes out early and wins the ball and stops the, the, the attack dead, if there's fans there, there's a big cheer and you know um, it's a great it looks like a great bit of defending. But is it is that thing? Is it necessary? No, well it wasn't. So we're th- three 0 up, comfy. I know we're saying we didn't want to see our team team sitting, and you're right. If he had won the ball, we'd have probably turned in it and the def- defence into an attack quick, but. Uh, it was just bad judgment, and it put Portis under pressure, and then that was lazy defending. Yeah, uh, but overall thoughts on the game, guys. I mean, Stephen, start from yourself. I mean, three-two was that a fair reflection on the game? Um, I think I think we could have been more comfortable, and like Dave says, there, like the two goals that we conceded were really lazy. Um, I felt sorry for Portis, obviously with his header, could have went anywhere. Obviously, if it was up the other end, we would be laughing, but. Um, see for a boy that's had like his first call up to the spot, like the international squad, and then he concedes a penalty and scores an OG in the same game. <laughs> what are the odds? Eh? Like, I know. Just but really I, th- I, th- I think though, to be fair, Portis. I mean, the first half, I, I text my dad about. It. He was absolutely strolling the game. He was playing like Beckenbauer at times. He was so confident. He was, you know, times where you know he was reading, intercepting, and reading the play, winning balls early. Uh, there was a bit where he sort of faked, it, uh, ducked his shoulder. The boy dived in. He took it past him and took a touch forward and stuff and dribbled past the boy. Things like that. It's just you know great to see him really playing with that confidence and obviously a bit of a frustrating second half for him when you take those two instances but Dave I mean we're really starting to see the best of Ryan Port just now yeah I, think, I honestly think he plays like he's 30 year old like the way that he controls and obviously that then you, you get the odd rash thing which shows that he is obviously still a young centre half but I no, I'm very happy with Port and Sinibran he's coming on really good Aye, now, um, well, if Chris Smalling can go to Roma for eighteen million pounds, <laughs> that's what we can sell Brian Porches for. <laughs> We've got a lot in this is probably one of the times where now when I'm looking through that Hibs team, I'm like, we've got a lot of potential like players that could go on for sell for money, which is yeah, that's not really been happening. Yeah, ah, yeah, like say, things like Brown, Thompson, Ryder, and all the players. Yeah, there's a there is a good few that you're like, they kick on and keep doing what they're doing, and we're being a bit we're being a bit more clever in the transfer market. It's no all loans and quick fixes and that anymore. It's like proper buy, buying uh, potential and then seeing how it works out rather than like a quick fix. Uh. Yeah, I mean, only two loans this window, and, and you know, one of them is a backup goalkeeper, and the other one is already signed on to be a permanent deal the year after that. So, I, I agree. I agree. It's great to see us uh, not just going for the short term fixes and getting even one of those loans. You know, they've already bought into the the, the long term rather than just the short term, which is can be some of the. Um, issues with loan signs as, as we found out in 2012 unfortunately um, but yeah so I mean uh, the, the Scotland game this, this week um, do, do we see Ryan getting a, a start Stephen start with yourself um, I don't think he'll get a start he should but I think when McKenna's moved down to Nottingham Forest I think that's probably sealed his place in the, in the centre back and obviously Gal Carrahan will probably be the other centre back um, yeah, I'd like him to start. I think he deserves to start, but I uh, can't see it. See, it should be on form, though. Like, how's yeah, it going to I mean, how, how is Motherwell a wet point half bottom of the table? Yeah. We're like soaring, and it's just, and then you've probably, you'll probably pit a uh, centre mid that doesn't even get a game for Man United in it's centre half anyway. So that just blows all logic out of water. Aye, aye, I did get me started on that. I had enough of rant about that last week. Yeah. Um, but obviously, so uh, although Portress is up in the, the Scotland squad um, and won't be available this week, Hibs still have games to play. Transition in nicely. To, we've got Brora Rangers tomorrow night. Um, Dave, what, what can you tell us about Brora Rangers? Loads. 
Yeah, you've done no. your research. Uh, I mean, honestly, I'm massive on my knowledge of Highland League football. Right, so what, what, what can you tell us about Pro Rangers then? So, Brora Rangers Football Club are a senior part-time <laughs> in the village of Brora in Sutherland. That's just up top of Scotland. Um, they play in the Highland Football League and they've been champions three times. Last year's tented title, though. Tented. Um, <laughs> so, I no bad. Stevie Mackay, the manager. Um, big, big Stevie. Um so, so Wikipedia aside, Dave, I know you've done some actual research. Uh, what can you tell us about Borough Rangers' recent form? They, they're used to winning games, and the last 18 matches, they've only had one defeat, and that was a Scottish Cup replay game against Morton. Um, so they drew, they drew at Cap- Capolo, is that Morton's ground? Yeah. Knowledge is through the roof. And then they, <laughs> they got beat uh, up in Sutherland, uh, right. one, so just up the top of Scotland again eh? um, but they, they scored goals as well 64 goals in the, eight, the 18 matches uh, so they're used to scoring goals they didn't concede many obviously they're not they're not coming up against teams at Hibs and that but the fact that that Morton game was only in December um, yeah. so if they can take get a draw like against a, a, a championship team who knows? The problem maybe, maybe, a I, tougher test than uh, BSC and like, Bonnie Dragon and that I would imagine. Yeah, we maybe shouldn't take them as lightly as we sort of initially thought. So no, imp- impressive, impressive stuff, Dave. I'm, I appreciate that. Um, so Stephen, getting, get, like, say, looking at a Hibs point of view, um, obviously Port just not available. Um, do you see us rotating the squad quite a bit? I, I'd like to see them just play that Dylan Barnes. Obviously, he, he probably will actually play because obviously Marciano is in the Israel squad. Mm-hmm. So um, it'd be good to see him, see what he does. Yeah. Uh, he better not fucking concede. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so, uh, what, what, so, with the possibility of rotation, obviously, um, Porches in the Scotland squad, which I've said so many times, I just could keep on saying it. Porches in the Scotland squad, do you know? Um, so, I mean, is there a chance that with rotation we could see Grey? McGregor, Hanlon, and Stevenson as the back four. No, that made me sick. How would it make you sick? Oh, I'd love to see it again. Dave, I mean, could you see it happening? I know that defence has probably got potential in the mm. future. Potential against Broda, Potential in the future in that I have developed. I mean, David Gray, David Gray, and McGregor need game time. You know, they, 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 they can only do so, so much running after games and things like that. They need to get some minutes in case somebody does get injured. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd be fine with that defence. I've just noticed that Broader Rangers play, it looks like Maroon. Oh, this has just got and, a lot more interesting. And they've got Rangers in their name. This is big. <laughs> a big night tomorrow night. I'm getting, I'm getting on the sauce and watching this. It's stuck into them. Uh, it's a, on to, a Wick top, a Wick Academy. They're, that's our big rivals. I forgot to mention that. Eh? On the Wick. <laughs> Uh, Stephen, one, one more answer. Um, obviously, uh, Louis came back into the team in the last couple of games. Uh, do you go with Louis or do you give Sean Mackey a run out? Just one more. Oh, just, just, just in the, the name. <laughs> Dave, Mackey or? Uh, I'd probably give Mackey a game. Yeah. We need, we need minutes and legs if we're going to call up on people. If we're not going to have a massive squad, we, tend to, we do need to try and use it and keep folk fresh and get folk ready. That's how I would play McGuinness if he's got a chance because it's like Callum in the group chat said it's perfect time. Like, oh, you didn't want to rush him in after a, a knee injury, but when, when else is he going to get minutes? Yeah, and and somebody else that could potentially see more minutes is uh, Halberg. Um, Jack Ross spoke after the game about his, his second half performance. Stephen, what was your thoughts on Halberg in the second half against Hamilton? I thought he'd done well. Um, I'm starting to see a bit of a player in him, but it just reminds me too much of Slivka. Comes in and out of games. And, I mean, I really rated Slivka. I would have kept him, but um, I think Halberg's... I, it, like, I think this is a game that he'll benefit from. He'll get confidence from it. 
Dave uh, Ross spoke to him, spoke about him and said he was a manager's dream and said about how uh, his attitude's been brilliant and how good he was for when he first came in, when Ross first came in. So, I mean, it's, it's great. To, obviously, a great a player who's not mum for the morning about not playing and, and is ready to go as soon as he's called upon. Yeah, I was going to say, he's a manager's dream and Ross will like him because he's no chat at his door and giving him a hard time. But would you, what would you rather? Would you rather if he had a... Uh, where backup players were pains well, I don't up, know. like Giza again, Giza again, fighting. I, I, again. He, might, he might be saying that. That's the thing. Like I just think this is the second time that a different manager has came out and praised his attitude about. You know, Hecky spoke about him um, playing the defensive midfielder role and, and taking that on, and and then Ross spoke about it as well about you know taking doing extra training sessions and stuff in order to uh, play in that new position. And then you've got Ross speaking again about how he's, uh, you know. His, his, his attitude's been brilliant even though he's not in the team so I don't know I just think it's good to hear that he's been praised yeah, it'd be good to, to, the thing about that is in that type of attitude is that's like a team player attitude mm-hmm. so I just want for when he does get called up and I've no doubt that he is doing this it's like he's doing his best to keep his position and he's not just accepting that look I'm all going to get a start here I want players every single player to be like um, I want to start you know what I mean You've got to hear that. If you want to win, that winner's mentality. And uh, getting to the, the sort of, I guess we've kind of naturally gone through the team here. We've sort of spent, spoke about the defence. Stephen's mentioned the goalkeeper. We've spoke about the midfield. Um, up front, Stephen, uh, any, what, what, what kind of strike partnership, if a partnership at all, would you like to see? Get Gullin some goals. I would, I would put Gullin in Nisbet. Um, I think with Nisbet like, missing out on the Scotland squad, I would just play him. Keep him informed, give him game, uh, give him the first half because he'll probably already bang in five, and then uh, just keep going up top for Red Oidge for the second half, since he obviously missed out on his call up for the Wales squad as well. So, Ryan Giggs is blind. Uh, Dave, um, thoughts on Gullen and Nisbet getting a chance to run out together? Uh, I would like to see, I would definitely like to see Gullen. I just I don't know what. Partnership, I would, I would give him uh, someday in the group chat. Said about maybe gain Dodge game, like get him some goals, confidence up. Like, no, that I think he looks like he's playing without confidence. He just scored against Rangers, but when this bit banging them in, could be, could be, that could be a shout. It just depends how we want to approach it. We could try a completely new partnership, um, but I definitely, definitely go on and then something someday. Gav's already shouting Gullin and Boyle. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know I love Boyle up top. Uh, so yeah, let's go for Gullin and Boyle. Uh, and obviously, I mean, I think Drew Wright's sort of been, obviously got a, a couple of starts in the number 10 position, but his natural position is winger. If we're going to go for that 4 4 2, I'd like to see him get a full 90 minutes, either on the right wing or the left wing. Um, so that means that if he's on the right wing, then Boyle can play up top. So yeah, let's just go with Boyle up top because I'm a big fan of that. Um, but yeah, so uh, final thing then, score predictions for the game. 8-0. 8 nil from Stephen. That's locked in. No change in that. That's getting done on a graphic and everything. Dave. He's just suffering, man. <laughs> I've no missed him. Uh, <laughs> I'll say uh, three nil Hibs. I like that. Athena. I'll, I'll go for a. I don't. No. You know, four one. I think I'm going to give a. I think you know um, they might play Maroon and they might be Rangers, but and uh, it's going to be shit seeing them score. But. Yeah, um, I can see them getting a goal against us, and then I have no faith in a substitute keeper, Gav. Aye, that's so that, uh... you see, as if we play Hamlin, McGregor, Gray, and Stevenson at the back. <laughs> <laughs> it will be. That's one of the things I'm most interested in about tomorrow, though, is is the lineup, and then seeing you know Ross has already said he's going to be doing it, seeing players that can be on the fringes uh, and see how they take their opportunity. So I think it's good to have players eager to prove that they should be in the team. So that's. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the team selection and then the, the game tomorrow. So that means um, we're going to have Stephen McGinn sitting as a defensive midfielder, eh? We could hear. Potentially, yeah, yeah. McGinn. Why not? I, I'd be all for that. I, yeah. I, I, I want to win, but I think the players that we've got on the fringes of first team are obviously well good enough to to be able to win that type of game. And I, but I need them to win eight nothing. <laughs> <laughs> With you shouldn't have went for that then. You're going to need to bit up a couple of pounds in that now, Stephen, just in case it yeah. does come in. I know. Why only get five to one or something? 
it'll, it'll be unbearable if it does come in on next week's pod, but aye. So, uh, so we'll finish up there, guys. What's your plans for tonight? Dave? Um, probably, is there football on? I know Hearts are playing Inverness, but that's rugby. Is there any actual football on? I'll, I'll check the now whilst you're saying what else you might be up to. I'm going to get um, something from the takeaway. I might get Ooh, a, wee, a wee cheeky calzone and then I'll probably play Call of Duty. What about you? I'm going to get back to the painting um, and, I, and you mentioned takeaway earlier on so I'm going to be doing painting and have pizza while doing it. You know what I mean? At night or something? Because you know? For the night and I saw it was like Dundee 3-0 in <laughs> Falkirk 3-0 against Kilmarnock and I was like oh that game's worth forfeit is it? Aye <laughs> why, um, why, am I, why am I not meant to paint at night Dave? Shadows Shadows? Yeah you're meant to paint in like proper daylight so that there's no like because you could miss bits because you didn't see it because the shadows uh, de- depend if you're in a well lit room or no though to be fair I've taken everything out. The, uh, we're sleeping in the living room tonight. The match is in the living room, so it's completely aye. It's, uh, there won't be any shadows. That'll, that'll feel like you're a wee win again. Yeah, I'm quite excited, but change, change the scenery. <laughs> uh, your plans for tonight, Stephen? Um, nah, it doesn't look like there's much football on it, to be fair. Yeah, nah. Um, aye, take away, I think. Oh, I've got, I've got the last episode of Love Island USA to watch, so... Right, we're skipping past that nonsense. Uh, what is takeaway are you going for the night? So we're all having takeaways, so let's have a bit of takeaway talk to finish edit up. That edit that out, Gav. I'm more <laughs> on here talking about Love Island. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to end through Love Island and Love Island Australia, so... Ah, oh, no. Nah, let's stop saying it. Uh, Dave, what, 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 you mentioned takeaway, what are you get in the night? A calzone, mate. Calzone, nice. Mm. Nice. What about yourself, Stephen? Indian, I think. Indian. I had an Indian last week. It was good. Um, I in Indian. What's that? I wanted an Indian. Did the boss say no? Yeah, yeah. so it's the place. <laughs> honestly, fuming, man. Yeah, no, no. You're right, okay. I like how you looked at the door there just to make sure she wasn't coming in when you said that. Correct. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm going for a Papa John's tonight. Um, aye. Just pizza. So, looking forward to it. Um, so, I. Uh, let us know uh, your thoughts uh, ahead of tomorrow's game at HFC Talk. And your thoughts, is this the best transfer window ever? Let us know at the HFC Talk. Uh, follow us wherever you get your podcast. Dave, what are you saying to finish up? It's a Tuesday and you're getting a Papa John's. Yeah, they, they, they do it two for one as well. Oh. Ah. oh, well then, maybe I'll let you off, but still. I know, I did think about Domino's, but Papa mm. John's is different, so no. Nah. I was, oh, yeah, it was quite easy. Pizza's pizza. I was looking forward to it either way. But aye. It's definitely not. But anyway. <laughs> so enjoy the rest of your week, folks. Enjoy the game tomorrow, guys. Enjoy the rest of your week. And thanks again. Cheers. Bye.